Let's get to work. Oh, Reyna, you ready? <laughs> we recently relocated this condenser. We had to do some brazing in a spot we didn't want to do it in. It's up in there. Long story short, the system was working perfectly before we moved it. Worked perfectly all the rest of the summer. And then um, this winter it stopped working. And uh, we thought that maybe when we came out and it was low pressure, we thought that maybe uh, we had had a leak up there. So we filled it back up and then went to searching for the leak. And come to find out, the leak's in here. So uh, we're right by the beach and you can see they've done a leak repair before. And we've got uh, our date tag right here. It's manufactured in 2012, so it's probably about 10 years since it was installed and started up. But uh, we are right by the beach, so um, this is not an abnormal thing to start leaking pretty frequently at this age here. So I did turn power off. Sure seems like power's off. What up, dude? <laughs> what are we doing, Alex? We are vacuuming down the recovery tank. So, uh, we got ourselves a leaker here. Um, wait, do we know right where it's at? It's like underneath. Pretty much right where your finger is, right there. Got it. Prep work on the pipe is probably the biggest thing that's gonna like save your ass in terms of um, what should we call it? Like having a successful leak repair time. So really, it's pretty simple. All you gotta do is scuff the pipe on a leak like this. Um, in an ideal world, what we'll do is we will actually, if this was our pipe, we would cut it, cut the whole section out um, that's like compromised, and then we would braze in a new piece of pipe and that would give us our best chance of not leaking in the future. But um, this is, we don't really like cutting pipes right near your compressor because it's already kind of bent per what the manufacturer wanted. So if we can get this thing repaired um, without cutting the pipe, that's gonna be our perfect world. If we uh, have our leak, what we have right now is like a pinhole leak coming out the side of our pipe. Uh, it, when we get our brazing rod on there, uh, if we can coat an entire, like, all the way around the pipe, it's essentially going to create a ghetto coupling for, for on the pipe, and then that thing should not leak. And uh, this system is 12 years old. Um, honestly, if this leak occurs again, we'll probably just uh, fix it for free for the customer and cut the whole section of pipe out and redo it. Um, but. Uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. Of course, it starts raining. Real important step is cleaning the pipe with water. Um, just getting all, after you sand it down, get all the sediment off that you just sanded. So, those of you who don't do it, yeah, see, here's our leak. I guess it is kind of. <laughs> you can see <laughs> parts. <laughs> Cameraman, action. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, uh, here we have our filter dryer. We did test this for leaks, um, and we did not find any leaks. As you can see, the system's not in perfect condition. We did kind of go over all the, uh, we, we, we did encourage the customer to replace this system, and he did not want to do it, so that is his call, and we will gladly repair his system for him. Um, but what we're doing, uh, 
we're going to attempt to do this repair without replacing the filter dryer. The way that we're going to do that is um, we're going to keep uh, moisture out of the system by, we recovered all the refrigerant except for the last couple PSI. And then we've got our nitrogen hooked up here. And this thing is under, uh, we already have this thing set to our braze. Um, we put some nitrogen in here already. So now we should maintain uh, pressure in here at all times. And there's not going to be any moisture getting back into the system the whole time that we're doing any of our work on it. I know someone's probably going to say we're doing it all wrong, but... Action. Right, Better start this weld here. Yes, sir. Sun's finally Ooh. coming out. First time on the torch, forgive me. <laughs> Uh, get a higher pressure now. Pump, pump her up. Drop it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So far, so good. Well, that's that's the nitrogen tank. Yeah, pretty about good. it. So. Oh, is it empty? Yeah, Just well, about, it's it. slowing down. Gotcha. All right, our pressures have. Stabilized 185.8. Um, yeah, usually we like to pressure test higher in an ideal world, but ran out of nitrogen, so um, our braze isn't leaking. Uh, really doesn't appear that there's more leaks, but we'll, I guess we'll see when we uh, vacuum her down. So, You know, you could supposedly die from asphyxiation if we're displacing too much air. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. That's like the number one cause of death for HVAC technicians. Asphyxiation. Yeah, mostly I think it's refrigerant though. You are, if you're like working in a closed room and you uh, like on like a water source heat pump or something, let out a bunch of refrigerant into a small space, boom, dead. We still have a little bit of pressure in here. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because, once again, we don't want to open this guy to the atmosphere. Um, so our filter dryer and everything in here um, has only been exposed to nitrogen and refrigerant. So we'll keep it just above positive. Just little by little. There we go. Um, so now we're gonna hook up our vacuum pump. Oh, what the fuck? We tripped a breaker. <laughs> <laughs> we tripped a breaker. Oh shit. On the I think we did that last time too. I don't see any trip breakers. No, it's not on right now. The light's not on. Oh, the light's on. Alright, so we've got it vacuumed down pretty low. Now what we're going to do is we're going to break it with nitrogen. This is going to kind of flush out all the gunk out of our systems. So you can see we already got it. It did vacuum down pretty low already, but... Um, that's what our gauge says. We want to get this to slightly positive pressure. So we're going to bring this up to about 1 PSI. Just enough to break our vacuum. There we go, 0.1. There we go. So now we have positive pressure. 
we're gonna let our vacuum go to work again. Usually I only crack it slightly when I do this. That way uh, we don't just absolutely destroy our vacuum pump. But it should vacuum down real quick the second time. And we'll, we're gonna make sure we have a real clean system for our customer. All right, 420, still dropping. Uh, That's what it is. All right, what? It's hold seven pounds? Seven pounds, 13 ounces. 13. <laughs> Send it. Is that micro game? You guys be on? We'll take it off once we're in positive pressure. Oh, we don't suck air back in. This thing's gonna be clean, dude. Mm -hmm. I put eight and a half pounds of refrigerant in here. Slowly but surely. I was going so slow. <laughs> Who did that? I did not do any of it. <laughs> that was me, I think. <laughs> it felt kind of empty for a second. Raina. <laughs> Gentlemen. Oh, nice. Shit. Here. Take your money. Repair went well. We explained to him that it obviously wasn't guaranteed. It was his choice. He wanted to keep the system. We, we moved the system to the side of the house about six months ago, and we did do an assessment of it then um, because we told him if it wasn't running well, we wouldn't move it. And it was running, I mean, literally, like it was running like it was new. I mean, he paid us for the work we did, and we have no problem doing repairs on older systems um, as long as people understand that uh, it's not guaranteed. What do you think, Rana? Did we do a good job? I think we did a pretty good job. 